Ireland is known for its meandering rock walls, lush green pastures, and stunning coastline. But these days, Ireland boasts a new distinction. It's one of the wealthiest nations in the world. Flush with jobs and money, there's a new exuberance in the air. For centuries, Galway on the west coast of Ireland was known as one of the poorest regions in the whole country. But look at Galway now. So you've been to the Cliffs of Moher and the pubs of Doolan, but I bet you've never seen anything in Galway quite like the G Hotel. Flamboyant, cutting edge, often over the top, the G has generated quite the buzz in Galway since it opened in 2006. Our owner, proprietor Jerry Barrett, is from the west of Ireland. He thought, let's create a story. Let's put the west on the map. The G Hotel was designed by Philip Tracy, a famous hat maker for the glamorous couture houses of Europe and for royalty. Tracy, who grew up near Galway, set out to create a unique property that was playful, posh, and humorous. You know, we can find traditional in Ireland, but here's something that kind of makes you feel like getting up to dance or makes you feel alive in yourself. Initially, the G appealed to well-heeled Dubliners who came for getaway spa weekends, but now it's on the radar screen of sophisticated globetrotters. Recently, Travel and Leisure magazine named the G the best-designed large hotel, describing its ambiance as swinging 60s meets Dr. Seuss. Over the last decade, Galway has become a hub for medical device companies. They've clustered here because the Galway campus of the National University of Ireland is this country's MIT. Fifteen years ago, scientists were fleeing Ireland for jobs abroad. But today, Ireland is wooing scientists from around the world, dangling research money from government and private industry. Galway is a walkable city, perfect for strolling about to shop or to take in a street performance. On foot, you'll see more signs of the changing Galway. It's getting harder, for instance, to find a traditional Irish bakery. One of the last is Griffin's, founded in 1876. Jimmy Griffin is a fifth generation baker who still uses the same simple ingredients from back in the days when the breads were baked in coal-fired ovens and delivered by horse-drawn cart. Flour, yeast, salt and water. End of story. And no preservatives, no nothing? No, we don't choose chemically developed doughs. We allow all our doughs to ferment and that's what gives them the flavour and the texture that makes them unique. And uh, this is why uh, I presume people have been coming to us for 130 years. Derville Stondoon and her husband, Charlie Troy, run Canuck Suin, which means restful hill in Gaelic. It's a kind of cultural bed and breakfast. Well, the idea is that people would come up here, that you would get a sense that you were in wilderness almost. There's a sense of timelessness in the, in the place. The spirits of those who dwelled here are all around you just the same. The people are beginning to appreciate what uh, was before and uh, celebrate the people of those times. Mm -hmm.